Hi everyone, welcome to Market Insight for the week of October 10th through the 13th. So, <clears throat> starting with our top-down approach and the monthly chart, the monthly continues to show us a bullish picture. Uh, prices pulled back into the vertical acceleration area, right here. This is the vertical acceleration right here. Vertical acceleration area, right? <clears throat> and it's also pulled back on top of important support. We'll see that better on the weekly chart in the moment. In a moment, uh, but for the monthly time frame, um, things continue to look constructive. We had sustained volume last month. Um, here it showed some supply, but I see it as more of an effort versus result kind of a thing. We had some effort to go down, but the result was fairly poor. We closed just underneath uh, August lows and not a whole lot more. So not really a great result for all that volume. And for the two recent down months of both August, right? I'm sorry, August and September, both. Uh, September and August, um, <clears throat> all that volume. And we are not able to break uh, below June's acceleration bar here. We're not able to break below that. So this is an important area um, that is saying so far, the supply we see is unable to change the behavior of the market. Okay? All this supply here on these on September October um, September October on August September, all that supply didn't do much. Just came right down into the middle of that bar and held. <clears throat> so we're still bullish uh, based on the monthly chart. So let's take a look at the weekly. See what we can see there. See if there's a little more detail. So um, this is an, an extended version of the weekly chart, right? Note how the week has come back down um, to the key area of support. We've talked about this area of support um, for months and months below the 4,200 line there. Um, and we talked about this as being an accumulation area throughout here. A nice accumulation structure. We talked about this all last summer and all springtime. So <clears throat> we have a nice acceler uh, nice accumulation structure that rose out of being oversold in the weekly trend channel, right down in here. Um, Yeah, in the week, uh, being oversold, sorry, being oversold in the weekly tre trend channel. Note the demand line holding here. This is the weekly demand line, right? And here, even though we're coming down, this is the supply line. So it's holding in here. And then the rally from the June lows, um, which is down here, um, to the August 22 highs, it's like a subtle change of behavior after becoming so significantly oversold in the trend channel. Then we see a spring, get that nice spring here. And then higher lows, these are tests of the springs here and also a last point of support. Um, and then as we rally up and come right to the top of this level here, I got it outlined in the, uh, the um, maroon colored uh, dash line here, we get absorption in here, right? Absorption occurs, and then we get a jump across the creek here, and now a back up to the edge of the creek. So, <clears throat> and this back up looks like an A, B, C down on the weekly chart, right? So we're backing up into onto the top of a lengthy supply area with all the characteristics of um, the Wyckoff principles 
and it's testing that area, okay? All right, let's look at the weekly in a little bit more detailed fashion, but I wanted to give you that overview. We're on, we're on top of really important support here. Um, and I'm anticipating that that support will hold. <clears throat> now let's take let's look at the weekly in, in as I say a more detailed fashion. First, we can see that A B C right A leg B leg and C leg. Um, we can see that pretty clearly here. Now the A B C is a corrective pattern. It comes out of Elliott wave theory. <laughs> Um, and it typically results in continuation of the overall trend, and the overall trend is up, right? So we're in an area of uh, important support for the S&Ps, and there's lots of confluence <clears throat> down in here as, as well. We have the, that overall access level around 4,200, that's one level of support, probably the most important level. We have a support line here at 48, at 4208, right in here. That's pretty good. We have the August 22 high uh, acting as support in here. That's also pretty good support. And we have the local weekly downtrend channel. Uh, indicating that the weekly is overs oversold at the demand line, right? This is the demand line, and we're oversold down in here. <clears throat> and so, uh, this is important area of support. You can see all that confluence. Now, four weeks ago in mid September, the weekly made a high of 45.66 on an increase in volume, but the close was poor. The week closed mid-range, <clears throat> setting up a weekly hidden upthrust, and we'll see the upthrust on the daily. Remember, hidden upthrusts are hidden from us, but they occur they occur as an upthrust on the next lower time frame. So we'll see that on the daily when we turn to it. But we have an, a hidden upthrust here uh, from this week. And then <clears throat> we get sustained volume and clear um, supply hitting the market on this week, right? Pushing it down. But I know that price stops at support, the, the area between it's uh, 4368 and 4350. Stops right in the middle there, right? So if supply was really dominant, wouldn't why would sellers push it? Why wouldn't they push it lower, right? Why wouldn't they clear this out with all that volume? So that, but not to say that this is <clears throat> a reason to to make a trading action. Just we're watching this, right? And they do push it lower the next week. Um, and they do so on an increase in volume. We get even more volume. But, and we have a lower low, a lower high, and a lower close, right? All, so supply is clearly quite active. Yet, despite all that negativity in the price and volume, there's also some constructive elements, right? First off, <clears throat> the range is narrowed considerably. Let's erase some of these things so we can see a little bit better. Look at the range on this bar and look at the range on the next bar. Completely small, right? And two, we close off of the lows. So we're seeing a potential transition from heavy supply to no demand and less supply, right? Uh, no supply and, and, and um, let me say that again. So we're seeing the potential transition from heavy supply to not so heavy supply. Here's the heavy supply on these two day, on these two weeks, and then the not so heavy supply on this week. And then we're, we'll see a uh, transition from no demand up in here to demand down in here. All right. <clears throat>
So we see volume increasing at support and the, and the narrowed range here, and then um, a close, mid-range close indicating buying, uh, or at least effort to go down is difficult um, and getting poor results. And then the reason for that is because buyers are stepping in at a key support level. And then this last week, ignore this because this is just the, the half day holiday trading. The, the uh, October 11th is, um, or today, yeah, not the 11th, the 9th. October 9th is Columbus Day here. It's a holiday in the US. So there's no trading in the American markets today. Um, so you're seeing just that half day on the overnight markets. But this last week is, is important. We see a further dip down, right, going underneath last the prior week's low and becoming fully oversold in the weekly trend channel, the local trend channel. And then we get a nice rally up and we do so on increased volume. So buying is exercising its advantage here and becoming more dominant. And again, as I've been doing for several weeks now, I'm emphasizing transition here. Things don't change or things don't normally change immediately. There's a process that occurs and it occurs over time. And we see that process in the price and volume as it unfolds over time, as it unfolds at these key areas of support and resistance, both higher time frame and local, right? So we're seeing that transition, we're seeing that process and transitioning from supply to, de to demand here. And we're seeing that unfold. This is how we tape read. Now, however, there's also an elephant in the room, right? We also know that a major global event is, has developed over the weekend uh, after all this stuff was painted here, after these price bars was painted. So, you know, I'm talking about the Middle East, once again, flares up in a conflict, I guess, Israel and Hamas or whatever. Um, so we've got conflict and violence in the Middle East. So the question now becomes, will this event affect this delicate transition that we're seeing here, right? It's pretty delicate if we, if we think about it. And we can see it unfold here. Can we see it? Will it affect that uh, transition from supply to demand? Well, most likely it will, but we don't know that for sure. And we also don't know exactly how it will affect the market. So here we are at a critical point in the market where, you know, one of those feathers weights on either side will determine the trend. This is, this is one of those areas. And we see the transition occurring. It's starting to develop here, right? But now we have a, an unusual and abnormal event thrown into the middle of this. So is it, what's, what's going to happen here? Well, we don't know. But this becomes a really useful opportunity for us to watch how a potentially disruptive event affects the market. And more importantly, how we see this unfold as it does. Okay, so that's what we're going to be watching this week. Not so much in terms of can we trade this effectively, but more so let's learn from this. Let's see what happens here because we're at one of those choice points, one of those choice areas where you know the market should act and do something, and now and it's starting to do that, and yet we have also a uh, major world event potentially uh, coming in to disrupt this. All right, let's turn to the daily. <clears throat> so as we saw in the weekly, the daily is reflecting um, uh, uh, the activity of buyers entering um, a falling market at support. So Monday, let's see, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, yeah. So Monday, we see little, little ability to rally, just no interest in the upside whatsoever. Um, Tuesday, the market falls on the largest downside volume on the chart, in fact. It's a little bit more than this. Um, and it closes down below last week's low. That's right here, right, on the chart. 
Um, and, but then Wednesday, buyers step in. Notice the shortening of the thrust. We have shortening of the thrust operating in a couple of ways here. Shortening of the thrust in the price action and shortening of the thrust in the wave actions. If we look at this wave down and then up and then this wave, much smaller on here, okay? So we've got it operating at two different levels here. Um, but Wednesday, the buyers step in and close the day back up above last week's lows and back up above. This is basically the, the weekly uh, trend channel as well as the daily trend channel here. So we're coming back up above the trend channel here. Thursday, classic test, no supply, right? Test or no supply, either one, doesn't matter. But there's no supply. And what happened to all that supply? We were heavy, heavy, heavy coming down, increasing on the way down. And now, bang, we have an opportunity, the sellers have an opportunity to push it down and they don't uh, capitalize on it. And then Friday, the buyers see that. We go underneath. Thursday's low, and then it's a trend day up all day long. And as I said, the last day here is just a half day trading on Columbus Day, an American holiday and not worth um, uh, thinking about. And so we see bullishness and we would expect this to uh, continue. But before, so before we get into what might happen there, let me just highlight one other thing. I said earlier, if we go back to the weekly chart, that this area in here at 45, uh, 45.66 was a hidden up thrust. And that we can see that on the daily chart, the hidden up thrusts aren't seen on the, the, the hidden time frame. they're seen on the next lower time frame. And if we look, <clears throat> lo and behold, there it is right here. There's our up thrust on the daily. So hidden up thrust on the weekly, up thrust on the daily. Okay, just wanted to point that out for us. So look for that. It's a nice little combination trade setup. Okay, so we um, see the bullishness down here, and we would expect this transition to continue on up, and we'd be looking to buy in here. This probably would have been an excellent buy spot. Um, if it were on a normal day and not a holiday. Um, so we're expecting this transition to occur, to continue, but we have major news and this may affect the market. So what do we look for early next week with, with all of this going on? Well, for me, the key is closing above these two levels of resistance here, 43.50, and uh, let's actually go back a second, see if we can see it better here. Yeah, we can actually see it better on the weekly chart. <clears throat> so I use that. So 43.50 is this low here. And then 43.68.50 is this low here. So really, we want to get up above 43.68.50, which means I want to see this market start closing up above last week's high. Okay. That for me is the key here. If we're not able to do that, then something, you know, something else may be going on. But if we can close above that, it's going to encourage the buyers to continue to press higher for um, um for higher prices, and then the targets would be, we go back to the daily for that, the targets would be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 44.34 is the first obvious level, and then 45.66 towards that. Actually, even before that, maybe around 45, um, 25 the daily um, uh, supply line rather than all the way back up to the top. And if we start closing below last week's, so let's shift back over to the uh, weekly chart for a sec. If we start closing below last week's lows here, um, look for, and that's at 42.35 and a half then look for a push down 
more into the 4200 level, but not much deeper than that. Um, and that should still be pretty good support because we do have access line, we do have all this other confluence. Now, it's the break of 4200 that would concern me. That would be a serious development here and would change the complexion of the market. We'd be heading for lower prices, I think, if that occurred, most likely. So that's kind of my line in the sand. I'd be looking for movement down, uh, further downside if we start closing down below 42.35 last week's low. And we may come down into 4200, 42.10, somewhere in this area, and that would be fine um, if it can react off of that. But if it doesn't and starts uh, pushing down below 4200, that's going to be more serious. Um, and we'll have to address that when, if, if and when that occurs. All right. Let's take a quick look at the um, uh, major markets. Again, we see the NASDAQ here uh, holding nicely, right? It's the, it's the stronger market uh, and has been for a bit. It held, it held its August lows here <clears throat> while the Dow and the S&Ps continued to go lower and then finally caught a little bit of fire here on Friday. So um, the key market, I think, is going to be the Dow. We're very, we're, uh, we're a little bit far away from the resistance, so there's some movement that has to occur. We want to see the Dow push up and above this resistance. If it can't do that, these markets may be in trouble. So we'll watch the Dow if we start to rally or if it starts to close down below. Um, it, ha it really does have to clear its August lows for this market to to rally up higher. All right, that's what we have today for this weekend. Um, uh, just a reminder for next week, we're on normal schedule with deep practice for Thursday, October 12th at our normal time. So I'll see you then. And um, have a great rest of the holiday weekend and a good trading week. And I'll see you on Thursday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now.